Hey, Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome back to another XNA networking tutorial. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to set up another protocol for player hit. Now, we're only going to do the player hit, and we're going to go ahead and delete this enemy died protocol. Uh, because we want to just do one side per client. So, if client A player is hit... It will send that protocol to client B, and that will be the enemy has been hit. So we don't want to do two, both player hit and enemy hit, uh, because we could possibly do that. We would hit them twice, because it will send that protocol, and it will actually hit them twice. So let's go ahead and create the player hit, and let's put that above the player die, the protocol. So player hit is equal to 4, comma, and let's update the player died to be 5. Let's set the, let's delete the enemy died, and validation is still 6. Alright, so we have player hit and player died, so let's worry about the hitting in this tutorial. So let's get the collision detection going, and actual hit the player. Okay, so we need to set up health for the player and we did already. Let's increase it to about two. Alright, so both the player health and enemy health are set to two. Now Now we actually have the collision detection in place, we just need to send the protocol. So, what we're going to do is we are going to set up to where the player health is decreased. We are going to send a protocol here. That will tell us when the player has been hit. So after the I minus minus semicolon, let's go to the right stream and set the position to zero. And let's write the player hit protocol. And that's pretty much all we need to send because we know which player is going to be hit. Okay, so now let's go ahead and delete this. And delete this else if here for the enemy health. Uh, because the protocol will take care of the enemy being hit. So we just need to worry about the player health. And for the game over. We do not send the enemy died protocol. So go ahead and delete the right stream and send data for the... Enemy health is equal to zero. And then just show the message box. Alright, so now what we need to do is go to the protocols and handle it whenever the player is hit. So remember, whenever you receive something that happens to the player, that means it's the enemy. Whenever you receive it, it's the enemy. So, the protocol is before player died, so else if p is equal to protocol.playerHit. Remember, this refers to the enemy in this client. Enemy health minus minus. If enemy health is less than or equal to zero... Then we're done. And we're done. Let's just set it back to zero. If it's less than. Alright, so just player hit. We just decrease the enemy health and we're good to go. Now, whenever the player gets hit in the first client, 
it will automatically remove the bullet. So we need to have that option, the capability in client 2. So what we need to do is go back up to our player hit whenever we write the player hit. And let's take the I minus minus and put that after the send data. Because what we're going to do is writer dot write and let's just write I for the index. By the way, how can I be sure that if we just send the bullet index from one client to another client that it will remove the appropriate bullet? Well, if we go ahead and look at the code, if we look at the update method, whenever we create a bullet, we have a bullet created protocol and it will send the information it will just send where it's created and the enemy, the other client, will automatically do all this stuff that's as well. So we send, whenever we create a bullet, we send the bullet created protocol. So it creates the bullets in the same order we fire them, and then we remove the bullets in the same order we uh, remove them in one client and another client. So th therefore, we will always know that our list will have the exact same bullets. A bullet of index 2 on the client side is going to be the same bullet as index 2 on the enemy side. Client A, client B will have the same list of bullets. All right, <clears throat> so now we go into the player hit protocol. And then... After the enemy health has been reset, let's go after the if block. And let's go ahead and remove the bullet. So we'll go to int index is equal to reader.read int32. Opening and closing parentheses and semicolon. So we read the integer that we sent. And that's going to be the bullet index. So now the player hit refers to the enemy has been hit. So it's been the player bullet. Player bullets dot remove at index index. So re remove at index. All right, so if we build the project, go to build and then build solution or press the keyboard shortcut and then we go to that folder and then create two games, two instances, and let's go ahead and position these. All right, so I'm going to have the right window shoot, which means on the right side it will shoot from the player, so it'll go from the bottom up. On the left side it will go from the top to bottom. So we press space to shoot. Space to shoot again because it's two health. Okay, so now this says the enemy has died, and then you have died. And you can tell which one it is because if you try to close the game, it'll show you. If I try to close this game, do anything with this game, it'll tell me that the enemy has died. So, we know it's working correctly. I press OK and the enemy should go away and the bullet should go away. And it does. Then you have died, so you should go away and the bullet should go away. And it does. So, now that we have our hit protocols going, uh, we should be ready to go for the next step. Okay, so right now the game is pretty much complete. For a tutorial game, it's pretty much complete. What I would like to do in the next few videos is to spice things up. You know, create a cool looking display. We'll create a nice space scenery and a uh, better way to display that you have died or the enemy has died. And just spice the graphics up a little bit. Uh, but for the next tutorial, what we're going to do one final thing is we're going to restrict the movement of the player to 
the bottom half of the game window. That way you cannot overlap each other and cause a whole bunch of issues. So, I hope to see you next time.